Hi guys, uh, this is Dr. G here and in this video we are going to talk about the term solubility. So in this video the learning goals will be to define the term solubility and also distinguish between saturated and unsaturated solutions. And finally we are going to identify a salt as a soluble or a insoluble salt or in other words we are going to learn about the qualitative analysis for a salt as a soluble or an insoluble salt okay so let's first talk about the definition for solubility okay solubility is defined as the maximum amount of solute that dissolves in a specific amount of solvent the maximum amount of solute that dissolves in a specific amount of solvent so two things are important in this uh, uh, definition you have to have a fixed or a specific amount of solvent and then when it comes to solute the solute should be the maximum amount that you can dissolve okay that you can dissolve in the solvent solubility of course is temperature sensitive okay by increasing or decreasing the temperature you can alter the solubility okay so whenever you define solubility you have to define or identify the temperature and uh, solubility is also expressed as grams of solutes in 100 grams of solvent. Solubility is also expressed as grams of solute in 100 grams of solvent. Or usually, I mean, uh, we say 100 grams of water because, you know, most of the times water is the common solvent, right? So uh, sometimes you may uh, see equations that are defined as 100 grams solute divided by 100 grams of water. As solubility all right so the next thing that we are going to discuss in this video is the term unsaturated solutions and saturated solutions uh, in an unsaturated solution okay uh, it contains uh, less than the maximum amount of solutes in other words it has not reached its solubility Okay, so it contains less than the amount of solutes it can contain. So let's say you have a beaker, let's say with 400 milliliters of water. Okay, and then you uh, the solubility of salt in water, let's say, is a certain amount. And then that amount contains about 10 spoons of salt going into water. Okay, let's say you only add three or four spoons of salt spoonful of salt into water and then it can contain more salt you can easily dissolve more salt in it so that solution could be considered as an unsaturated one because it contains less than the maximum amount of solute so therefore you can dissolve more solutes in it the next term that we are going to talk about is saturated solutions okay saturated solutions contain the maximum amount of solute that can be dissolved so basically this solution already has the maximum amount of solute so it has reached the solubility okay so therefore you may have undissolved solid i mean undissolved solute at the bottom okay in this beaker as you can see i think this is uh, uh, water and salt so you have the saturated solution here and then you may have some un undissolved solute at the bottom okay and uh, usually what happens is that you always have a equilibrium between the saturated uh, solution and the undissolved uh, solute layer some solutes always uh, dissolves into the uh, saturated layer okay sometimes solutes from the solution can recrystallize at the bottom okay so there is always an equilibrium but the take home message is that the solution phase the top phase has the maximum amount of solutes that it can have okay so basically when you are making a solution you will achieve this equilibrium and then you pour out the solution part uh, which is basically the saturated solution all right see if you could do this study check you might want to pause the videos whenever there is a study check and then try them by yourself before you know listening to the video so label each of the following solution as saturated or unsaturated. A. Salt disappears when put in water. 
so if salt disappears when putting in water that means you can add more salt to it without any difficulty which means it is an unsaturated solution which is an unsaturated solution sugar added to a cup of water does not disappear but sits at the bottom of the cup so if sugar is not going into water but it is sitting at the bottom that means it is already saturated it is already saturated so this is saturated okay this is saturated whatever you add will go to the bottom and then uh, sit in there because the solution is saturated so those are the answers in the next study check you have the solubility of potassium bromide which is 80 grams in 100 grams of water and at 40 degrees celsius remember solubility for solubility temperature is important temperature is important in this you have uh, the solubility of kbr at 40 degrees celsius identify the following solutions as either saturated or unsaturated in uh, question number a you have 60 grams of kbr in 100 grams of water so this will be unsaturated why because for 100 grams of water you can add 80 grams but you're only adding 60 less than the maximum amount that you can add so this will be unsaturated in b uh, 200 grams of kbr added to 200 grams of water this will be saturated actually this will be saturated you know for 100 grams you can add 80 so for 200 grams you can only add 160 grams okay you can only add 160 grams of water so you will have 40 grams of excess kbr at the bottom okay you will have 40 grams of excess kbr at the bottom in question number c you have 25 grams of kbr added to 50 grams of water this will also be unsaturated why because for 50 grams of water you can add uh, 40 grams of kbr okay based on the solubility but you only have 25 you can add 15 grams more if you want to so this will be unsaturated this will be unsaturated so let's talk about the effects of temperature okay uh, solubility once again is dependent on temperature and for most solids for most solids uh, solubility increases with temperature okay so when you increase temperatures when you increase temperatures solubility increases when you increase temperatures solubility increases okay but most of the times for gases solubility decreases with temperature okay solubility decreases with temperature that is why uh, when you have a soda can outside at, at, at high temperatures the gas tend to leave the aqueous soda bottle okay aqueous solution uh, so if you add ice to your soda i mean it will keep more gas bubbles inside the container inside the soda can okay so for gases the solubility decreases with increasing temperature but for solids it increases as temperature increases a prime example is that take a cup of water and take a cup of uh, let's take two cups of water one is boiling okay at 100 degrees celsius the other one is at room temperature let's say 25 or let's make it cold let's make it like you know five degrees celsius so you have a cold water cup and then you have a hot water cup try dissolving a, a spoonful of sugar into both of them you might have done this before let's say imagine the hot cup of water is your coffee the cold cup of water is your orange juice when you're trying to dissolve a spoonful of sugar into these two you will realize that you know in the hot solution you can easily dissolve the sugar uh, i mean in a second or two i mean it, they will disappear but in the cold cup i mean when you're making orange juice you put a spoonful of sugar and you try to dissolve you drink it and you look at the bottom of the cup and you still have the sugar at the bottom right so when the solution is cold it is hard to get uh, sugar into water okay because the solubility is less uh, when temperatures are low all right so now we are going to come to the meat of this discussion okay so this part is actually very important uh, especially for the exams and for general life this is the 
qualitative solubility of group 1a and group 2a salts this is the qualitative solubility of group 1a and group 2a salts i hope that you remember the metals that you have in group 1a and group 2a okay for group 1a let's talk about lithium sodium potassium rubidium and cesium okay i don't have cesium here but it is very similar to rubidium okay and then in group 2a we are going to talk about magnesium calcium strontium and barium ions okay so in 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 the left hand side i have group 1a or group 2a metal ions okay group 1a or group 2a metal ions and then in the uh, top in the in the first column first row i have some anions okay these are poly anionic or sometimes it could be a halogen okay so i have some anions here uh, in the top row okay so what this table means is that let's say um let, let's take this one as an example okay so in here the chemical compound that you are interested in in this is the lithium nitrite lino2 okay so in here for lithium nitrite uh, you have a S which means it is soluble. Okay, so if you have a S for a certain uh, ionic compound, these ionic compounds, why? Because you have a cation and an anion making a compound. So cations and anions come together and make an ionic compound. So in this table, we talk about the solubility of some very common, uh, uh, some very common uh, ionic compounds. Okay, so if they are soluble, I have a S. If they are slightly soluble, I have a SS. If they are insoluble, I have an I. Okay, so this is how you understand. Them. This is how you understand them. Okay, so if they're soluble, I have a, a S. If they're slightly soluble, SS. If they're insoluble, if the salt is insoluble, I have an I to that respective cell. All right, so as you can see, so for group 1A, group 1A metals. All, I mean, all the ionic compounds are highly soluble in water. All the ionic compounds are highly soluble in water. So if, if someone asks you to bring an ionic compound that is soluble in water, you don't have to worry about anything, but make sure to find an ionic compound that contains a group 1A metal, right? So if you have a group 1A metal in your ionic compound, if you have a group 1A metal in your ionic compound, that ionic compound is soluble. The ionic compound is soluble. Very easy. Okay. So let's talk about group 2A. Let's talk about group 2A. Group 2A is tricky because some ionic compounds are soluble, some are not, some are slightly soluble. Okay. So let's talk about group 2A metals. Okay. So usually for group 2A metals, Halides, nitrates, and nitrites. Halides, nitrates, and nitrites are soluble. They are soluble. So if someone asks you to find, uh, bring or find a soluble salt, ionic compound from group 2A, you simply have to uh, find a halide, nitrate, or a nitrite. Halide, nitrate, or a nitrite. Okay, halide, nitrate, or a nitrite. Uh, there is one similar uh, anion to ha halides, nitrates, and uh, nitrites, which we call acetates, okay? CH3, CO2 minus. This is a similar anion, okay? So usually, acetates, nitrates, nitrites, or halides are highly soluble with group 2A metals, are highly soluble with group 2A metals. Keep that in mind. That is important. But if you take a look at uh, sulfates, hydroxides, oxalates, or chromates, the solubility varies depending on the group 2A metal that you have. Depending on the group 2A metal that you have. For, mag for sulfates, let's talk about sulfates first. So we are going to uh, focus our attention to sulfates now. Okay. So if, you, if we talk about sulfates, uh, strontium and barium. Strontium and barium are going to be insoluble sulfates. Strontium and barium are going to be insoluble sulfates. In other words, strontium sulfate and barium sulfate. 
these two sulfates are insoluble they are insoluble they are insoluble these two sulfates are insoluble okay uh, calcium sulfate is slightly soluble and then uh, excuse me calcium sulfate is slightly soluble and magnesium sulfate is soluble magnesium sulfate is soluble okay so i remember strontium sulfate and barium sulfate because those two sulfates are insoluble in water so let's talk about hydroxides now let's talk about hydroxides now so uh, when it comes to hydroxides magnesium hydroxide is highly insoluble in water it doesn't like water calcium hydroxide is slightly soluble strontium and barium hydroxides are soluble in water okay so remember magnesium hydroxide because it is highly insoluble in water when it comes to oxalates when it comes to oxalates uh, calcium and strontium oxalates are highly insoluble in water calcium and strontium oxalates are highly insoluble in water and you might also remember calcium oxalate ca c2 o4 calcium oxalate is actually the one that you have in ki kidney stones okay that is the one that is common in kidney stones uh, and uh, calcium could be present in your drinking water okay so if you are drinking hard water hard water means water that is rich in uh, calcium ions and magnesium ions so most of the times uh, regular tap water is hard so you have high levels of calcium and then oxalate is common in uh, oxalate is common in uh, uh, tomato tomato so you are not supposed to uh, take calcium rich food with uh, tomato okay so it will give you a lot of calcium and oxalate into your blood and then they might they might precipitate in kidneys forming kidney stones okay so calcium oxalate is an important important precipitate okay and then for chromates chromates barium chromate barium chromate is actually insoluble others are soluble or slightly soluble okay so barium chromate so not the highlighted uh, uh, highlighted ionic compounds they, they are insoluble in water they are insoluble in water you might want to remember them okay i usually remembered them when when i was learning them okay so those are the insoluble ones of course they are qualitative okay you know at at a certain concentration anything could be insoluble anything could be insoluble you guys just learn solubility right but these highlighted ones these highlighted salts have a very low solubility so even at low concentrations they will be precipitate so they will be solids they will be solids okay so they have a very low solubility in water they have a very low solubility in water okay so remember these highlighted ones especially and let's talk about the color let's talk about the color uh, uh the insolubles i mean uh, chromate has a color okay chromate is uh, orangish in color okay so yellow orange color chromate has a color but none of the anions or the cations have a color so all the other anions or cations have color are colorless so <coughs> if it is not a chromate solution all of them will be colorless just like water okay all of the sodium uh, or group 1a group 2a soluble uh, uh, salts will be colorless just like water you wouldn't even notice that they are in their uh in in water okay but if you have a chromate solution it will give a yellowish color it will give a yellowish color to the solution okay and uh, for precipitates okay uh, most precipitates are white in color okay or the insoluble salts the precipitates will be white so the ones that are highlighted are white okay those things are white but because chromate has a color barium i mean barium chromate will also be colored since chromate is colored barium chromate will also be colored barium chromate will also be colored and then it has a orangish color okay this one will be colored 
this one will be colored okay that is the only colored precipitate that you will have other precipitates will be uh, white in color other precipitates will be white in color all right moving on and i have a uh, study check here for you guys okay see if you could do this one this is from solubility why could a bottle of carbonated drink possibly burst uh, when it is left out in the hot sun of course when it is out in the hot sun you know the solubility of carbon dioxide decreases so they will liberate from the uh, soda solution carbonated soda solution okay and then it will increase the pressure inside the can and it might explode okay it might explode so why do fish die in water that is too warm okay of course the easy question is that you know some fish is not sensitive to high temperatures okay so they might die but let's not worry about that let's think this question through the solubility of uh, solubility okay so we know that fish needs to breathe for that they need oxygen in the water okay so at high temperatures okay and the solubility of oxygen in water will be low so basically water will degas water will degas and oxygen will leave water okay so fish will not have enough oxygen to breathe so they will die okay they will die all right so uh in in gas law we also talked about uh, henry's law okay so basically according to henry's law okay the solubility of a gas in liquid is directly related to the pressure of that gas above the liquid okay so we talked about this in uh, henry's law but i just want to remind you about it in here okay so uh, basically if you uh if the if the gas layer has high pressures high pressures the liquid layer can have uh, more gas molecules dissolved in it okay dissolved in it that is why when a soda can is unopened okay uh, the gas layer will have a lot of gas molecules creating a high pressure system in there so therefore it will maintain a high level of gas molecules in 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 soda okay but once the gas can is open the pressure is released and the uh, gas layer will have less carbon dioxide molecules so therefore it will not force many carbon dioxide to go into water so the soda will be less carbonated so that is why you feel like you know uh, after opening a gas i mean uh, after opening a soda can you might want to drink it soon otherwise it might not be very pleasant okay it might not be very pleasant All right, so this is actually from uh, a text Kimber Lake textbook. This table is actually from a Kimber Lake textbook. Okay, this also highlights some of the very common uh, insoluble salts or salts with very low solubilities. So as we as we discussed, okay, group one A metals are very soluble. Okay, so you basically have no uh, solids or ionic compounds that are insoluble. okay similar to group 1a ammonium is a very common cation uh, whenever ammonium is present in an ionic compound that ionic compound tend to be soluble so that is something important to remember okay and uh, anions like acetate or nitrate okay these are highly soluble nitrate or acetate they are highly soluble anions so whenever you have these anions in your ionic compound they tend to be insoluble okay but things like halide could have insoluble uh, cations okay like silver or lead or mercury cations okay and uh, so those are some of the common uh, things that you might want to remember so and also uh, anions like sulfate could have uh, insoluble cations we just learned that you know things like calcium sulfate and barium sulfate they are insoluble so this is how you want identify this table or understand this table all right and uh, here is an application for the solubility insoluble salts insoluble salts okay in early dates uh, we have used barium sulfate okay barium sulfate uh, in order to enhance x rays you know barium sulfate has a low solubility okay so 
uh, let's say you want to image uh, or x-ray the uh, intestine okay you you drink a solution of barium sulfate okay uh, and then you know because of the insolubility you know it will in enhance the x-ray it will basically enhance the x-ray So here is a here is a very practical table or a table which basically helps you understand uh, how this solubility works. Okay, so if you have a compound like potassium sulfite, okay, you know it has potassium ions, it has potassium ions, so therefore it should be soluble. So for calcium nitrate, okay, you know it has nitrates because of nitrates it will be soluble. Lead chloride, once again. Chloride and lead 2 plus, that's a combination that leads to an insoluble salt. Okay. Sodium hydroxide is soluble. Why? Because you have sodium. Aluminium phosphate. Uh, both aluminium and phosphate are insoluble, and that combination will also be insoluble. Okay, so that is how you basically use these tables that I have given you. Okay. And you might want to remember some of these combinations. And here are some more examples. So most of the uh, D-block metals will make uh, insoluble uh, solids with uh, with sulfides, okay? With, with things like sulfides or sometimes halides and also hydroxides. And the other thing is whenever you have D-block D -block metals, they also make colorful uh, precipitates, colorful precipitates, okay? Uh, so these are some of the examples in this study check what ions make each of these compounds insoluble in water okay so <clears throat> so basically in calcium sulfide sulfide is the one that makes it insoluble iron once again the sulfide for lead iodide both lead and iodide as a combination is insoluble okay and uh, for nickel hydroxide, nickel 2 hydroxide, hydroxide ions uh, are usually insoluble when it, when it is with uh, D block metals, especially with things like nickel. Okay, these are some of the reasonings. But remember, things like sulfide and hydroxide, they tend to make insoluble salts with D block metals, with D block metals, transition metals. All right, with that, I'm going to uh, conclude this video, okay? And then uh, our next lesson uh, will be on concentration of a solution, okay? So uh, I will conclude this video and then I will make a new video for concentration of a solution. All right, you guys have a good one, guys.